Hello and welcome, you're watching Head to Head on UATV and I'm Alas Gurdjuk. On August 24th, Ukraine celebrates the Independence Day. This might be a good opportunity to take a look back and assess how has Ukraine changed during the 27 years of independence, to talk about the biggest Ukraine's achievements and failures in the dimension of international relations, we welcome to our studio today Serhii Korsinski, director of the Hennady Udovanko Diplomatic Academy of Ukraine. Hello and thank you for being with us, Mr. Korsinski. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to have you here. Let's start with the most important. Many experts are pointing out uh, that pointing out that uh, the Russian-Ukrainian war in the in the east of Ukraine and the occupation of the Crimean Peninsula can be only resolved due to the um, strong and very well targeted, very effective uh, diplomatic. Uh, uh, measures. What's your take on that? Is this the most effective tool to restore the peace? Look, if we talk about uh, relations between countries, uh, normally speaking, you have two options. You use force or you uh, use uh, peaceful manners and peaceful ways of communication. Negotiations. Uh, negotiations. Uh, when, uh, you know, that's this very famous saying that uh, when diplomacy fails, then uh, artillery will talk. Uh, we don't want uh, the open war. Uh, we uh, value every life of uh, Ukrainian soldiers. We, uh, we are absolutely convinced that uh, open war is not in a solution because it could bring so much destruction, so many death, deaths, that uh, it is better to work through diplomatic channels. So the statement that the only uh, the diplomatic way to resolve the conflict with Russian Federation, I think it's absolutely correct statement. Mm -hmm. but, but this statement brings a lot of issues on the table because what does it mean? When you have uh, this enemy, you must understand, in each country we have embassy. Uh, we have Russian embassy, and Russian embassy normally like four times, five times bigger, uh, staffed by personnel, and this personnel is very well trained. Many of them, officers of uh, FSB, I mean, Different uh, intelligence, groups, intelligence group services, security services, etc. They have a lot of money, literally uh, uh, 10 times bigger than us can invest in that. So when you deal with this uh, challenge, you must understand Ukrainian diplomat can, should work uh, efficiently vis-a-vis -vis four or five very well prepared Russian diplomats. So that means this that we challenge. have to be very, very well prepared. This is a challenge. Are we very well prepared? How well prepared are we and how uh, do, does the Ukrainian team of diplomat look on international stage? Uh, I, can, I can tell you the best way. I can tell you that's from my personal experience. When the war began, I've been ambassador of Ukraine to Turkey in Ankara. Uh, and uh, you, you can imagine the shock we experienced when we witnessed uh, Crimea occupation, because, you know, Crimean Tatars, that's there, yes. actually Turks. So that's why Turkey was heavily involved. And I would like to remind, for example, that first foreign minister uh, after the revolution who attended Ukraine, who visited Ukraine and met with, at that time, interim president Turchinov, that was Turkish uh, foreign minister Davut Olu. So we were very informally, we were involved in what is, was happening. And, uh, but at this moment, we suddenly realized that we are not well prepared, actually, because it was shock in Kyiv, it was shock uh, in, uh, in diplomatic uh, services. But uh, to, to the credit of uh, our colleagues uh, in the foreign ministry uh, at that time, uh, we began to work uh, very efficiently, quickly, after several months. Mm -hmm. Probably we did not achieve the maximum at that moment. But you remember, that was an extremely difficult time uh, when we, we, we were facing collections of the presidential elections. So you have to reestablish first power in Kyiv in a uh, uh, in a constitutional way, then uh, to, 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 to receive uh, the guidance uh, what you should do. We were working, we were working, not waiting for uh, a direct request from Kyiv, uh, and many of my colleagues, they were among the best. I can tell you, for example, at some moment, we, re we, we checked uh, who are the best uh, uh, in the social uh, media uh, uh, universe who were 
uh, tweeted and uh, um, worked through Facebook uh, to send our messages, Ukrainian messages, to the world. What users uh, are the most known and viewed? Users? Yes, yes, okay. exactly. And, the, and the, among the top in the world, there were three Ukrainian ambassadors. Oh, wow. Yes, that was a fact which was very stunning to learn. Uh, ambassador in Finland, in Poland, okay. uh, and in Austria. So, and in Austria. Uh, yeah, so they were working like day and night. Uh, I mean, but you know, that one of the ways possible. But that's uh, 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 like a signature what, what what we were doing. We were trying to be pre present in the media. Uh, to to deliver this message to to meet with uh, academia with officials with public on tv whatever was possible to bring the truth because russian propaganda at that was moment was extremely strong how did the reaction to ukraine changed within this time uh i think we won this this battle uh, I, I i'm pretty sure we won it uh, I so know Ukraine was not take, uh, taken seriously back in 2014, or was it? No, it was taken seriously, but the most important it was to explain that this is not a coup, we are not fascists, we are not... The actual I war. mean, those, uh, you know, all those uh, uh, major messages from Russia, from uh, Russia Today, uh, and Russia Today is present, I mean, still present uh, uh, pretty, pretty widely mm -hmm. in the world. So it was important for us to, to explain this is all, this is not true. That's completely different story and to bring our story, our message. And I'm pretty much sure we won. Uh, I, I've seen and I know and I was told by officials, different levels that, uh, you know what? Uh, we, we understand now completely what is going on. We, we understand that you are under threat. We understand you are under occupation and position, you remember, very soon it was a very important victory in the United Nations when we won 111 votes uh, in the General Assembly resolution, resolution, which first recognized that we are under, uh, under direct assault from, from Russian Russia. Federation. Exactly. Uh, so you pointed out these achievements. Um, on the other hand, what is not being not being done, and what maybe aside strategies would you add to the process if you were in power of doing so? Uh, you know, diplomacy. Uh, some one on one hand, this is very, uh, very useful and important tool for intergovernmental communication. On the other side. You cannot substitute the whole range of activities which government have, have to do in, in those uh, uh, circumstances. And I think uh, we, we, uh, we lost some uh, maybe, you know, uh, pace of activities in, in, uh, in the first years of war uh, to, uh, to stop it from spreading widely. I think we could do better, uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, it is easy to say to tell it right now uh, when situation is more or less stable, but even today four soldiers were killed, so it is continuing, and I think that we have to 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 exercise even more pressure, even to double our efforts to stop this uh, bloodshed, to stop this aggression. Thanks God, we achieve uh, the main result. Russia is absolutely without no doubt recognized as aggressor. As aggressor That's important. Yes. A very touchy and controversial uh, topic is coming up, the diplomatic relations with Russia. And here is Shakespeare's question, to be or not to be? Uh, you know, uh, it, is, it is, from my point of view, it is very populistic to say, you know, let's break uh, diplomatic relations. Uh, le let's, let's talk seriously about that. What that will bring us? Yeah, what advantages what, and what disadvantages? Yeah, what, what advantages? Uh, it's, it's just a pose from my point of view. Mm -hmm. We have now, and that's, uh, it's, it's, it's official, uh, three to four million of Ukrainians who work in Russia, Ukrainian citizens. Who will take care about them? Who will take care about our citizens who are kept as political uh, prisoners in Russia? Uh, talk to our consul general in Rostov, uh, who recently was appointed as ambassador to Bulgaria, uh, Vitaly Maskalenko. Ask him how many people he saved, literally saved, from being arrested, being harassed, uh, or being prosecuted in in, uh, in in huge area. He he covered it as a consul general. I mean, if we withdrew those, I mean, if we withdrew those personnel. Uh, 
who will who will care about that? Uh, we we need to maintain even in time of this is with this war we have to maintain uh, at least some kind of uh, communication channel ambassador was recalled a long ago you know that uh, yelchenko so i think this is a little bit more populistic it's pose it's it's like surface of what has to be done mm -hmm. we have to understand what's going on it is important to have our people right on the spot who can monitor media uh, political discussions, TV, we have to pay them more to, 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 for to watch those. Yes, for this, I mean, very harmful psychological job to, uh, to watch the Russian TV because, you know, this absolutely un un no. unimaginable level of dirty propaganda about yeah. Ukraine. But we, have to, but we have to know that because we have to know our enemy. So from my point of view, we maintain a uh, minimum but proper level of uh, presence in Russia, mm -hmm. uh, and that's a kind of necessity. It's not uh, we love or we don't love. It's necessary to have this kind of communication. In order to restore peace in the occupied territories. In the yeah. end, as a major goal, yes. Well, you already touched the topic about prisoners, so let's focus a bit on the political prisoners being illegally held in Russia and occupied Crimea. Um, in your opinion, uh, is it enough that Ukrainian diplomats are doing on this matter? Can they do more? If so, what could they do? Uh, I can uh, reassure you that uh, the, it's an, among the first, maybe not even num right now, number one priority of all diplomatic missions of Ukraine mm -hmm. to have to energize, not just to be for it, not just to make a flash mobs or i mean official statements or use social media as as embassies or consular offices but to organize the local communities ukrainian and pro-ukrainian and to bring this message as wide as possible and to demonstrate to the to every country where they are present that those the, this is absolutely uh political cases political prisoners hunger strike of Senso and uh, others, uh, that they have to be released. And uh, I, I think what we are doing, it's, it's absolutely a stunning uh, amount of support we have now from around the globe. Yes. Leaders of countries, they say in our support. So uh, I think it is very important. And uh, uh, I, I, I can't imagine what else we can do. All kinds of communications, we're mm -hmm. ready on all exchanges, whatever they want. But, but we know that uh, in Russia, the value of human life is zero. That's if they true. zero their own lives, so no, no remorse to Ukrainians. The, That's the exactly the Ukrainians. case. Well, indeed, the, the, the support from the international partners is, is significant uh, in case of political prisoners. Uh, but during the latest trilateral contact group in Minsk, Ukraine was proposing another prisoner swap that was again blocked by Russia. So what were the conditions of it and why were they not favorable to the aggressor state? Uh, honestly speaking, I don't know details about how how the negotiations went. As far as I know, we we uh, are ready to uh, to do whatever. I, I mean, not equal exchange, but but to do whatever is possible to get our people out, of spe specifically those who are on hunger strikes. So it's not just Sensov. There are several of them, Kolchenko, etc. Et of course. So we we have to take care of all of them. What is important to understand that we demonstrate to the whole world that for Ukraine every life is very valuable. Yes, that's we do not talk about we do not talk about price. We need to get the result, and we see we see an attitude from other side. We know that Sensov is not guilty. We know that Kolchin cannot. We know that. I'm not mistaken, almost 70 people kept yes, uh, as political. Around 70, uh, yeah, yes. around 70. So uh, they, they, they are kept uh, hostages just because they were, I mean, uh, protesting uh, occupation of Crimea, very legal thing for demonstrating Ukrainian flag. So that's, that's absolutely um, unacceptable. And I do believe that the only thing we can do else to have more support from international community to get the result. Yes.
the most important thing is that we root for our people and that we stand for our people. And exactly. on this note, we will exactly. conclude this conversation. Thank you so much for being a guest in our studio. My pleasure. Thank you. That was Ambassador Sergei Korsinski, director of the Hennady Udovanko Diplomatic Academy of Ukraine. Thank you for watching Head to Head. I'm Alas Garduk. Goodbye.